Hello friend, I'm Rich Stocks. This is Prayer School. Did you know there are prayers that God cannot answer? That's what we're going to talk about today. Stay there. I'll be right back. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. We are proclaiming God and His Word as the one source of spiritual, physical, and financial well-being. Now, here's Rich. Good things come from the Father of life. Shadow of turning or changing his mind. Hello friend, I'm Rich Stocks from the Healthy Christian Broadcast. In 1997, I heard a cassette tape by Dr. Joel Wallet called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Dr. Wallach teaches that we all have the potential to live healthy lives well beyond the age of 100, and if you give your body what it needs, it will do amazing things. I want to invite you to join millions of people who've already heard Dr. Wallach's life-changing message. Now you can hear this message free of charge on our website at mineraldoctor.com. Here are three simple steps you can take right now to put you on the path to a longer, healthier life. Listen to Dr. Wallach's message, schedule your free health evaluation, schedule a free phone consultation. We have an experienced team of people standing by ready to help you with your health and well-being. Free wellness teaching, free health evaluation, free phone consultation, all found at mineraldoctor.com. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you reach your full healthy potential. Hello friend, for many, many weeks we've been in a series I'm calling Prayer School. We've had many sub-series. We're in a sub-series now that I am calling Right and Wrong Praying. Right and Wrong Praying. You say, Brother Rich, prayer is prayer. As long as we're praying, isn't that okay? Well, let's find out what the Word of God has to say. We saw in Luke chapter, Luke chapter 11 that Jesus was praying and one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Well, just by the fact that Jesus began to teach them immediately, he didn't say, oh, you don't need anyone to teach you. It's okay. It doesn't matter how you pray as long as you pray. No, he began to teach them. Well, the fact that he began to teach them, first let me say this, he did not just exhort them. We talked about the word exhort last week. The word exhort means to urge, to admonish, to recommend, and to warn. Well, we hear a lot of that today. We hear a lot of exhortation that we should pray. We should pray more. We should pray longer. We should pray harder. And warnings about what's going to happen if we don't pray. Well, that's the definition of exhort. We're urged to pray. We're admonished to pray. We, it's recommended that we pray. We're warned what might happen if we don't pray. But there's far less teaching how to pray. I, I've had a few friends that I put a video on a couple of years ago on YouTube when I first started doing uh, YouTube. And a very short video. They, they were not timed for television. And it was called My One Minute Daily Prayer. Now, the video is longer than one minute, okay? Don't go watch it and say, I thought you, but it was about a 15-minute video, but I'll teach that again during this series. But my one minute daily prayer, it's probably not even one minute. That's not all the praying that I do. But the Lord helped me, gave me a summary, a nice prayer that summarizes what I want to pray for each day. And I call it My One Minute Daily Prayer. Well, the Holy Spirit taught me that based on years of study in the Word, but He taught me a specific prayer to pray. When this disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray, Jesus began to teach them how to pray. Well, if you can be taught something, that tells me there's a right way to do it. And I gave the example, I taught my sons how to shoot a basketball. Now, they were far better basketball players than I was, but I taught them how to shoot a basketball, and they both became pretty good. One really worked and worked and worked and excelled and became very good. Well, if there's a right way to shoot a basketball, there's a wrong way, and I guess we could say there's a good, better, and best. 
you know, and recently I heard a minister say that the enemy of wrong, what did he say? The enemy of right is not wrong, or the greatest enemy of, I'll get it right, the greatest enemy of right is not wrong, it's almost right. That's good. I like that. The same way with prayer. If Jesus, if they didn't need to be taught how to pray, Jesus would have made that clear. He said, you don't, he would have said, you don't need anyone to teach you. It's just the heart that matters. You know, it's your motives that matter. No, Jesus immediately began to teach them when he was asked how to pray. So if, the, if you can be taught, that means there's a right way. And my brother and sister, if there's a right way to pray, you can be certain there's a wrong way. If there's a right way to do anything, if you can be taught anything, that means there's a right way to do it. And if there's a right way, you can be certain there's a wrong way to do it. So we can pray correctly and pray effectively, or we can pray incorrectly and it will not be effective. We should not pray. The Holy Spirit's just saying this on the inside of me. We should not pray just to ease a guilty conscience. Well, I know I ought to pray more. Prayer, we've spent a lot of time on this, and, and you ought to go back and watch all of these. I don't know what number we're on. We've had 20-some-odd of these. But you ought to go back and watch them. We talked about fellowshipping with our Father. That's what prayer is. And we're going to talk about more about that in the weeks to come, what prayer is, what it's not. Right and wrong praying. But today, specifically, well, let me finish reviewing. We saw in lesson number one under right and wrong praying that Jesus said, do not pray to be heard by other people. Don't pray to be heard by men. And we put that in two categories. Number one is we don't pray to impress others. We read the scriptures for you where Jesus specifically said, don't pray like this. Well, if there's not a wrong way to pray, Jesus wouldn't have said, don't pray like this. He said, don't pray like the hypocrites. Don't, they love to pray like this, and I don't want you to pray like this. Right and wrong praying. And then we saw that you can not only, can you pray to be heard of others to impress them, but you could pray to be heard by other people to make them aware of your needs, to drop hints, that's what we called it. Dropping hints in prayer. Posting your prayer on Facebook. And I know I get on this a lot, and people Take issue with me over this, Brother Rich, what's wrong with that? Well, we're going to see. There is, there is nothing that I can find in the Bible where there's more power available because I have a thousand people praying versus me. In fact, Jesus said, after teaching this in Matthew chapter 6, where he taught, don't pray like this. And then he said, when you pray that you are to, well, let me look this verse up here where he says, you are to go into your prayer closet. Here we go. Matthew 6, verse 5 and 6, he says, But when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. That verse doesn't seem to go over well with most of my friends, even people who, you know, who enjoy my teaching. When I start talking about this, I think it's one of the greatest overlooked secrets of effective prayer is praying in secret. <laughs> A great secret of effective prayer, my brother and sister, is praying in secret. Nobody else knows what you need. Don't post your needs. Tell the whole world about them, hoping somebody will meet your needs. Just pray in secret. And then we looked in lesson number two about twisting God's arm, that people pray in such a way as if they're trying to persuade God. Well, if you're having to talk God into answering your prayer, well, we've got a problem. If I'm coming to God and I am not sure of His will, now, if I'm not sure, you can pray a seeking prayer. Father, I'm not sure what you want me to do here, but you said if any man lacks wisdom, all he has to do is ask and you'll show them what to do. That's a seeking prayer. You're seeking more information. You're seeking more insight. You're seeking God's guidance. But when it comes time to pray the prayer petition where you are asking God for something, you better know it's the will of God. You cannot possibly pray in faith for anything if you're not sure it's the will of God. You can ask God to show you His will. You can pray that prayer 
in faith. That's asking for wisdom. But outside of that, you can't pray for something if you're not 100% certain it's the will of God. You're, you're still in the seeking mode. Seek God and through His Word until you know the will of God beyond any shadow of a doubt then and now and then and only then. Are you ready to ask in faith? At every one of those prayers, listen carefully, you will never pray the prayer of faith. You will never ask the Father something in the name of Jesus, in faith, believing you have received it. And if you stay in faith up until the time you get it, you will never pray one prayer that you do not see and have and possess that which you've prayed for. You say, Brother Rich, that's a bold statement. Jesus said it over and over and over again. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and what? You shall have them. He didn't say you might have them. You shall have them if it's the Father's will. No, at this point, you're already sure it's the Father's will. You've already prayed the seeking prayer. You've already prayed the asking for wisdom prayer, and now you're ready to bring your petition to God Almighty, and without any shadow of a doubt, you know that you know that you know. Now, you've got to stay in faith. We spent many, many weeks pray in faith, stay in faith. What do you do after you pray? That's when the wavering comes. That's when attacks will come. That's when doubt will try to come and fear and talk you out of it. And if the enemy, the adversary, your own mind, other people, relatives can talk you out of it, you'll never have it. Even though you believed you received it when you prayed that it was granted by God, you will never have it, possess it, wear it, drive it, marry it. I always say that, walk down the aisle with it unless you stay in faith. So we do not have to try to twist God's arm. Well, I'm really excited about the lesson today. Right and Wrong Praying, Part 3, Prayers That God Can't Answer. What a statement. Brother Rich, God can do anything. Well, we've had this discussion before. We know for sure God can't lie because the Word of God says that He can't. And I, I know I've told this. Some of you, you may get tired of me telling the same things over and over, but keep in mind, every single week on this broadcast, we are on throughout the entire continent of Africa. Potential viewing audience of over one billion people with a B. And then we're on several networks here in the good old USA. So every week there are going to be new people watching. And I'm going to repeat some of these things over and over and over and over again. But I had a pastor one time. <laughs> and he said from the pulpit, he said, God is God. If he wanted to lie, he could. But why should he? He's God. Well... That pastor just called God a liar because the Word of God, this Bible right here, God said in His Word, He cannot lie. And for a man or woman to stand in the pulpit and say God could lie if He wanted to, in other words, He could change His mind. If He wanted to lie, He could because He's gone and nobody could stop Him. Well, that person is calling God a liar. They're declaring that God already lied to us because God said... Picture God saying, I cannot lie. And a man, a pastor, maybe your favorite preacher, saying, God can lie. Who are you going to believe? Well, it's the same way. Every one of these verses, any promise you find in the Word of God, any principle you find in the Word of God, any finished work you find in the Word of God, there will always be someone, some well-meaning oftentimes, thinking they're doing God a favor by straightening you out and you're goofy doctrine, there will always be someone that there to tell you all the yeah buts. Yeah, but. Yes, we know it says that, but. There, there are no buts, my brother and sister. That will rob you of the fulfillment of the promise. We're talking about you seeing your prayers through to completion. You praying a prayer, believing that you receive it when you pray, and then you staying in the place of faith until you have it. And I'm telling you that can be, you can get up to 100%. Brother Rich, 100%. Yes, having 100% of your prayers seen through to completion. 
to where you stayed in faith until that prayer, whatever you want to call it, was manifested, completed, until you possessed the thing for which you prayed. So there are prayers that God can't answer, and this is very important for us to know. Here are two kinds. Now, there may be many. When I say there are two of this, five of this, seven, that doesn't mean that's all that there are. I, I know one well-known minister, and he doesn't like that. People giving numbers. Just because I say here's two categories of prayers that God can't answer, <clears throat> that doesn't mean there aren't more. You may think of a dozen more. Oh, we only have limited time on this broadcast, so I'm just going to give you two. There are two kinds of prayers. Two kinds of prayers, for sure, that God cannot answer. Number one, asking God to do something that He's told you to do. Now, I'm going to give examples of these. All right, so just hang in there with me. If you ask God to do something that He's told you to do, how can God answer that prayer? He can't. God cannot answer a prayer. He cannot do for you what He's told you to do. Number two, asking God to do something that He's already done. And I'm going to give examples of both of these. How can God answer a prayer? It's, Brother Rich, I thought you said you read all the scriptures. We can ask God for anything. Yes, we also saw in John 15 verse 7 that if you abide in, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will ask what you will and it shall be done. But if God's word isn't abiding in you, you're not going to know what to ask for. You're not going to know how to ask. You can't ask faith. Yes, I'll say that. The Lord just said this inside of me. Faith cannot extend beyond knowledge. Now, you may not have the knowledge of how it's going to work. Don't misunderstand me. But your faith cannot extend beyond the knowledge of God's will. When Peter was in that boat. He said, Lord, if it's you to Jesus, bid me to come to you on the water. He needed to know because he had heard Jesus say, I only say and do what I hear the Father say and do. I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. So J Peter is convinced that if Jesus tells him to come, that's a word from God. Because he knew. Jesus said, I didn't come to say or do anything on my own, that which the Father says and does. I came to do the will of Him that sent me. So Peter was asking for that. He's seeking the will of God by asking Jesus, Jesus, if that's you, command me to come to you walking on the water. He wanted a word from the Lord, we could say. He wanted a word from Jesus. But what if you ask God to do something that He's told you to do, or what if you ask God to do something that He's already done? God can't answer that prayer. Uh, back to, to the thing with Simon Peter, Peter's faith could not extend beyond his knowledge of the will of God expressed through Jesus. The same with you. Your faith cannot supersede your knowledge of God's Word. Your faith is limited by what you know, or we could say a better way to say it might be this. You, your faith is limited by what you don't know. Your faith is limited by what you know and don't know from the Word of God. Again, two kinds of prayers that God can't answer. Number one, asking God to do something He's told you to do. Number two, asking God to do something that He's already done. Let's look at an example. Again, there could be many more categories besides these two. Don't get all excited. Brother Rich says there's only two kinds of prayers that God can't answer. No, I didn't say that. But there are at least two. So here's an example of asking God to do something He's told you to do. And you hear prayers like this. People will pray, Oh Lord, just renew our minds right now. Just renew our minds. There's an example. Let's just say, asking the Lord, renew our minds. Well, Romans 12 verse 2 says this. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. 
What is the understood subject in this sentence? Well, it's, it's you. It's me. We could read it like this. And you be not conformed to this world, but you be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Well, what if you were to pray and ask God your Father, Oh, Lord, just renew my mind. I've been having bad thoughts doing this. Other scriptures are coming to mind as well. Right now that I didn't have here, uh, the scripture about you taking every thought captive. That's not in my notes here. But what if you were to pray a prayer and say, Oh, God, these evil thoughts, just take them captive and, and renew my mind and this sort of a prayer. Well, number one, he's, he's told you here in Romans 12, verse 2, to renew your mind. Here's another scripture, it's not in my notes, where he told you and he told me, take every thought captive, bring it into uh, the obedience of Christ. I wrote about that in my book. I didn't mention this earlier, any gift to the ministry. I'll send you this book, The Secret of an Unshakable Life. I talk about taking thoughts captive. The only way to take a thought captive is with another thought. A greater thought, a stronger thought, a more powerful thought, a more prevailing thought. That's how you take a thought captive, with another thought. How do you take a human captive with another human? Now, you might do it through mechanical means, but another person would devise those. You take a human captive, it takes another human, generally speaking, or two humans, and it takes one that's bigger, stronger, or smarter, or all three, to take a person captive. How you take a thought captive with a bigger, stronger, more powerful thought. So if you pray and ask God to renew your mind for you, my brother and sister, God cannot answer that prayer because He's told you to do it. If you pray and you ask God to take those evil thoughts captive that are coming to your mind, God cannot answer that prayer because He's told you to take thoughts captive. He's told you to bring them to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Let's look at another example of this. You hear prayers of people asking God to do something about the devil, to bind the devil, or to cast out the devil. Well, uh, let me just say this. God has already done everything He's ever going to do about the devil. Other than at the end of time, He's going to cast him in the pit. But in your personal life, in your walk with God, God has already done everything He's going to do about the devil in your life. Say, so how do you know? Because the Bible says Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, making a show of them openly, triumphing over them, all the principalities and powers, in the cross. Jesus has already defeated every devil. He stripped him, the Bible says, totally stripped him, and given us power and authority over all devils. So if you start praying to God, asking God to do something about the devil, you're just, you're just praying into the wind, my brother and sister. It's not a prayer that God can answer because He's given you the power and the authority to do that. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says this, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. You can't pray, you can, but God can't answer and ask God, cast out the devil. Lord, just cast the devil out of this person in the name of Jesus. No. No, you cast him out. Jesus didn't like it. When they, a guy brought someone to the disciples and they could not. It was, I believe, the lunatic Boy, falling down, having spasms and seizures and things. And they tried, and the devil was not leaving. He was resisting them. Well, Jesus wasn't very happy about it. They said, why couldn't we cast him out? He said, because of your unbelief. He had already given them power and authority over all devils. And so if you start praying, asking God to cast out the devil, bind the devil, do something about the devil, it's not a prayer he can answer. Let's look at another one. Ephesians 4 verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Who's the understood subject? It's you. You don't give place to the devil. Oh, Lord, just bind the devil just now. No, you don't give him any place. Ephesians 6 verse 11. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the schemes, the tricks, the subterfuge, the deception of the devil. The understood subject again is you. You put on the armor of God. 
God's not going to put the armor of God on for you. He's not going to resist the devil for you. He's not going to cast the devil out for you. So don't pray those kind of prayers. We're talking about prayers God cannot answer. Here's another one. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He's not fleeing from God. He's fleeing from you. Oh, well, I'm nothing, Brother Rich. <laughs> That's not what the devil thinks, but he'll agree with you. Well, I'm nothing. I have nothing. I can do nothing. And the devil will beat your brains in, so to speak. He'll take over your life. But it says here, and again, the understood subject, James 4, 7, is you, you submit yourself to God. You resist the devil and he will flee. Here's another one for you. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. He's not going to the throne of God like he was, it did with Job, seeking whom he may devour. He's roaming about this earth like a lion looking for prey, seeking whom he may devour. What determines if he can devour you? It's not you asking God to do something about the devil. What determines if he can devour you is you. It says here, you be sober, you be vigilant. Why? So you can resist the devil. <laughs> I was going to tell you another story, and I, we're already out of time. I'll tell it to you next time during the review. But I want to leave you with one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible, 3 John verse 2. God desires above everything else, my brother and sister, think about this, that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Hello friend, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our Healthy Christian YouTube channel. We have hundreds of videos. It's free to subscribe. And if you click the notification bell, you'll know every time we post a new video. There's a link to the channel on our website, richstocks.org. We have two other websites for our friends and partners for nutrition and wellness. We have mineraldoctor.com for weight management, simple3slim.com. I want to say thank God for all my partners. Together we are sending God's word to the whole world through television and social media. Every week we hear from people and they're hungry for the Word of God and this is made possible through people just like you. The Bible teaches that we are to sow into the ministries that we receive from. So if you're receiving from this ministry, I want to invite you to become one of my partners. We have a video on our website called Becoming a Business Partner with God. The web address is richstocks.org. I join my faith with yours for a great harvest on every seed you sow into this ministry. Thank you for joining us today for The Healthy Christian with Rich Stocks. If you enjoy this teaching, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For additional teachings by Rich Stocks and to help us send God's Word to others, visit our website at richstocks.org. You can also send your praise reports, prayer requests, and questions through our website. The website is richstocks.org. That's richstocks.org.